Welcome to Greater Harvest Church Ministry, where our motto is, Our Church is a Blessed Church, and where our pastor, Renardo Ward, has declared that he sees a greater harvest in your future. We are located in the wonderful city of Memphis, Tennessee, on the corner of Winchester and Boxdale. Our address is 3509 Boxdale Street, Memphis, Tennessee, 38118. We thank you for tuning in to view this video content, whether on our mobile app, website, YouTube, or Facebook page. We certainly are grateful that you chose Greater Harvest Church Ministry to feed your soul through prayer, worship, and the Word of God. And now, let's connect with today's broadcast. Have hands, clap them, and thank the Lord for life, health, and strength. On this Mother's Day 2022, the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. How many of you know the Lord is good? Hallelujah. If you know this familiar song, you can stand with us and give God praise because we're going familiar on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, all over the house. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Let's say it again. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Forever. Let's say it again. Lord, you are good. From every nation and time, from generation to generation. Every nation 
Jesus, he's kept us through two years in this pandemic, and we can breathe on our own. He is just that good, just that good, just that good. Say that, just that good. Say that, just that good. He's just, just that good, just that good. He's just that good. said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh God. Hallelujah. It's prayer time. It is prayer time. Let us go before the throne of grace and mercy. Our God and our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth and to the precious Holy Ghost we come on this second Sunday Oh God, commemorating your son Jesus who bled, hung, and died. Oh God, that we have a right to eternal life and we say thank you. Now Jesus, we celebrate every mother on this Sunday morning, both past and present, oh God. We thank you for the mothers, oh God. Bless them, keep them, and strengthen them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, Lord, look upon your people, O God, who are called by your name, O God. Those who are sick and afflicted in their bodies. O God, we know man is just licensed to practice medicine. But it is you, O God, who is Jehovah Rapha, our God, who healeth thee from our sickness and diseases. Now, Lord, we ask that you would go into the hospitals, that you would visit every mother on this Sunday morning, oh God. Let them feel your Shekinah glory. Let them feel your healing virtue flowing throughout their bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now look upon that man that is incarcerated. Touch him right now from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, Lord, we lift up our president, O oh God. We lift up his cabinet right now, O oh God, that they will have the cares of your people, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, look upon this great city of Memphis in which we reside, O oh God. Look upon the mayor, look upon the city officials, O oh God that they may have the best interests of your people, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, Lord, look upon that man, look upon that woman, that boy, that girl who is going for a procedural, O oh God, on this coming week. We ask right now that you would touch the physician, O oh God, that you would alert his mind, his eyes, O oh God, his hands, O oh God, that they will be skillfully to do the procedure that you have ordained, O oh God, by your manservant. And Father, we thank you. 
Now look upon our pastor, Lord. A pastor who is a man of knowledge and wisdom, O oh God, that you would continue to breathe upon him. Look upon his wife, O oh God. Watch over her. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, touch him, O oh God. Now look upon Joshua. Continue to keep him. Watch over him, O oh God. Heal, deliver, and set free. Now look upon our late bishop's wife, O oh God. Touch her right now, a virtuous woman. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, continue to keep her of the apple of your eye. Mm, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, look upon every mother. Look upon every mother on today. You know their heart desire, O oh God. Bless them, O oh God. Shower down blessings, seen and unseen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, we vow to always give your name glory. Look upon the messenger on today. Touch him right now. Give him a rhema word for your people. Break up the fallow ground, O oh God. Give an ear that we may hear what said the Lord. We plead the blood over this message, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we vow to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. This is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning is coming from Proverbs, penned by Solomon. And, and I'm going to read three. And the first one will be Proverbs 31 and 10, and then drop down to 28 and 31. And it reads, who can find a virtuous woman where her price is far above rubies? Verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praised her. And verse 31, give her the fruits of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. On behalf of our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the precious Holy Ghost and our pastor and his wife and our late bishop's wife, Mother Julia Scott Ward, we salute all the mothers, both past, present, and future. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He is worthy. Of all the glory, honor, and praise, there's a, um, a national symbol that we use when we're directing, and it goes simply like this. Either way you go, it means the same thing. Do that with me. Now take it the other way. Isn't that the same thing? Isn't that what the Lord do to you? Bless you over and over and over again. We're going to sing this old familiar song today, and we want you to just join in with us. you probably just going to learn it on the fly with us. Ain't that something? Just clap your hands. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody sing over and over. Over and over and over. He keeps on blessing me. He keeps on blessing me. Everybody say, over and over and over. He keeps on blessing me. He keeps on blessing me. Say it again, over. Over and over and over. He keeps on blessing me. He keeps on blessing me. One more time, say it again, over and over. Over and over and over. He keeps on blessing me. He keeps on blessing me. Fill up my cup. Blessing me. He keeps on blessing me. That's it. Over and over. Oh. 
the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. And all of his righteousness and all of the others. Say it again. For seeking the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. And all of the other things. And all of the other things. Will be added. Will be
There's an old hymn of the church. I forgot to tell them to take Mother Lambert a mic over there so she can help me. You remember this? The Lord is blessing me. Come on, church. Right now. I hear you. Oh, yes, right now. Oh, the Lord. Oh, the Lord. Come on, play this old hymn. It's blessing me. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody thankful that the Lord he is blessing you right now? Anybody grateful because the blessings he's the blessings he's bestowing on me right now are not the end of the blessings he has for me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful we are uh, blessed to be in the house today, uh, not only because we are in the house, uh, but somehow our online uh, service has uh, failed to go up. So sometimes you, you understand how good it is to be close to the fire. You know? I, I can watch it at home, but I can change the atmosphere in person, amen? Sometimes you just gotta be close to the fire. So we're, we are recording and we will um, air uh, the service at a later time today. Hopefully we'll get it up today. But I'm so thankful I don't have to wait on the service to go up. I'm in the house. I'm live in living color. 
Anything he wants to do in here, I don't have to wait for it to make it through the airwaves to get to my TV. I can be a first-hand participant, amen? I'm an eyewitness in here, yeah. Yeah, you know, some testimonies they give you, you know, it's second-hand. It's, it's second-hand, but, you know, it's, you know, an eyewitness is more credible, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an eyewitness in here today, amen? Hallelujah. So we're thankful. At this moment, we're thankful. I wish somebody had a hand here, because I'm going to ask Brother Rob, Brother Samuel, to grab a microphone, because on this day, I know how appropriate it is that we hear Mother Ward's voice. Yeah. As she approaches 90 years old and has covered almost everybody in the room in prayer, I think it's appropriate on Mother's Day that we hear from Mother Ward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's Mother's Day. You can do whatever you want to do. You can speak, sing, sigh, whatever you want to do. I have so much that I can thank my, my Jesus for. <laughs> Since I've been a soldier fighting this old holy war. I found my blessings one by one. Just look around and see. I said, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to me. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> I just want to give you a moment to take a moment, take time to think about where you are in your life and where you could be in your life. I have been through accidents and incidents, had guns pulled on me and in danger that I didn't know I was in, and the Lord has kept me every time. The Lord, I'm still here. Folks plotting against me and planning my demise, and God said, not so. <laughs> Anybody else got a testimony? Will you just lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you for where he brought you from and where he brought you through. Hey! It could have gone a different way. It could have gone a different way. You don't have to be sitting here today. You could be dead in your grave. You could be sitting in a jail or laying in a hospital bed. But the Lord saw fit that on this day, we are in his house giving him praise. Through my aches and pains, whatever problems and predicaments, he is still worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. 
Listen, I understand that for some of us, this has been a crazy week. Some of us have experienced unusual, abnormal stuff this week. Some of us have gotten phone calls from family with problems that we didn't expect and couldn't see coming. But at the end of the day, I am here to remind you that the Lord is on the throne. That the Lord is on the throne. And the thing that shake us and catch us by surprise, don't catch him by surprise at all. As a matter of fact, he's already made the solution before the problem hits. So I'm challenging you right now. If you've had a rough week, I'm challenging you to give God an anyhow praise right now. What's an anyhow praise, Pastor? An anyhow praise is when stuff is going wrong, I'm going to praise him anyhow. When I don't have enough money in the bank, I'm going to praise him anyhow. Got problems and situations, I'm going to praise him anyhow. People don't like me and misunderstand me, I'm going to praise him anyhow. I don't feel my best, but I'm going to praise him anyhow. Can you give God a anyhow praise? Hallelujah. Oh, he's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all come on and praise the Lord. He's worthy, Pam. He is worthy. Hallelujah. praying against distractions and disrupts, disruptions. And then this week, they started to hit everywhere. So I'm thankful that God forewarns us and tells us in the spirit what to pray for and then challenges us on how to handle that. Amen? So a lot of this stuff that popped off this week was distractions and disruptions. And God had already told us to be ready for it. Amen? Amen? And so it's up to us. When God gives us the plan, he gives us the information, it's up to us to follow the plan. Amen? Amen? Because you understand, not only does God have a plan for you, but the devil has a plan too, right? And then you have your own plan, right? Of those three plans, ain't one of those plans, gonna, but one of them going to bring life in that more abundantly. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm thankful. It is Mother's Day. I would like to ask all of the mothers in the house to stand. All mothers in the house, please stand. I would like to ask the musicians to give us a big fanfare. Everybody put your hands together for... I, I, it's a little dry in here. I don't know why, but I'm thanking God anyway. Y'all, 
Uh, come on, musicians, we need a big fanfare for these mothers. Y'all acting like y'all don't have no mother. Come on, musicians. I know y'all got good mothers. Come on, come on. I would like to take the opportunity to speak for the house and to say to every mother that's standing, uh, we, those that you have birthed or helped nurture, we want to say we appreciate you more than our words could ever express. We can't tell you thank you enough for what you've done. All of the tears you cried, the patience you had when we got on your nerves, the whoopings you gave us when we deserved them and didn't deserve them. We thank y'all for everything that you have done. Again, can we do a big round of applause for all, all of the mothers, all of the mothers, all of the mothers. You may be seated. We want to thank God for our church mother who is here. Looking good at 80. Amen, amen. And thank God I saw Pam and Stanley. I'm looking for Toya. But we're thankful for our church mother, amen. All right, so I know it's Mother's Day. I know you all have um, dinner plans or reservations or whatever you have today. Um, so I am going to go straight to the word uh, because I do want to encourage the mothers uh, and at the same time, we want to make sure that we are proclaiming the gospel. Amen? Amen? But we can do both at the same time, right? We can celebrate mothers and celebrate the risen Savior, Savior all at the same time, right? All right, all right. I don't know what's going on in here today, but we thank God anyway. Right? Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verse 57. Luke chapter 1, verse 57. Luke chapter 1, verse 57. Father, I pray now that you settle the minds of your people. Pray now in this moment, live and those that will watch later, that we be reminded of who you are that there is nothing that we face that is bigger than you. There's nothing that we face that can defeat you. So, Father, I thank you that you have a plan for our lives. I thank you, God, that you have the last say-so over our lives. So, Father, I pray now your healing in this room. You will touch sick bodies, touch afflicted bodies. Father, I pray now your peace in this room for the troubled mind and comfort for the grieving heart. You see and you know what we need. And we bless now your name, God. So have your way in this place. Minister to us. You know what we need. God, have your way in this place. And we give you praise. We give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus Christ. And the people of God said amen and amen, amen, amen. So now we stood for mothers, so I'm going to ask you now to stand for the word. Amen. Luke 1, 57. If you got strength in your feet and ankles, come on, stand with me. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered. And she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord showed great mercy upon her. And they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. And they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, not so, but he shall be called John. They said unto her, There is none, by, none of thy kindred that is called by this name. They made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. 
Amen. I want to talk briefly from the thought, thank God for mama. Thank God for mama. Amen. 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 Uh, this is a very busy day for a lot of people. This is a very uh, important and special day for a lot of people. This is a very um, exciting and fun day for a lot of people. It is also at the very same time for a lot of people a very hard day and a very sad day. And so as we celebrate uh, mothers, we also understand at the same time that there are those that are grieving and heavy hearted, those who are separated from their mother by death or by distance, or those who had a desire to become mothers and were never able to naturally birth a child. So this day is normally full of emotions and uh, you have people going out to celebrate and having family gatherings with their mother and you have people at home sitting alone in the dark who uh, don't want to be around anybody and don't want to see anybody. You have people who are at the cemetery laying flowers out and reflecting and crying. You have a, a, a various, uh, a, a variety of emotions that go forth on this day. But I do want to say, uh, no matter what state you find yourself in, the fact that God used a woman to bring you forth and give life to you is a blessing. Amen. Whether the mother was what you would call a good mother or not, whether the mother raised you or not, whether uh, you still have the privilege of your mother being here today or not, God used that woman to bring you here. And for that, we ought to tell the Lord, thank you. It ought to be a few more thankful people in the room, but I understand. It's Mother's Day. You feel in some kind of way. I understand. But you ought to be able to tell the Lord, thank you for the mother that birthed you. You ought to be able to tell the Lord, thank you for the mother that raised you. You ought to be able to tell the Lord, thank you for the mothers that he put in your life to help nurture you. Amen. 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 Because it is a privilege to have the opportunity to thank God for your mother. We all have a mother, but we're not all thankful for the mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to look here at this passage, and I'm so glad uh, Lisa Banks is in the house because the first time God gave me revelation on this passage, Lisa went with me to preach it. So now she's here again. God just bring it full circle, don't he? Yeah, yeah amen. So Lisa, get ready because if I can't finish it, we'll just send the mic over to you. <laughs> we are looking at this passage at uh, an older lady, an older lady named Elizabeth, an older lady who is past the time to be able to bear children, and, and she did not have a child, and at the time that we see her, she's an old lady who has been a barren lady all of her adult life. She is, a, she is an old lady who, in the culture, uh, not having children was seen uh, as something to be despised. Not having children, not giving birth uh, was an issue in your family because the children were not only an inheritance from the Lord, but children were your retirement policy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so Elizabeth and Zacharias couldn't have a child, and although it was looked upon, frowned upon uh, in the culture and in the day as a bad thing, uh, we see in verse 6 from this same chapter that they walked uprightly before the Lord. They, they pleased the Lord in how they walked, so it wasn't that God was punishing them, uh, but sometimes life doesn't go the way you want it to go. 
It just doesn't go how you want it to go. And, and because it doesn't go how you want it to go, Zacharias, the husband who was also a preacher, didn't have faith when the angel came and told him they would have a child. And because he didn't have faith, God shut his mouth. He couldn't talk no more. He couldn't influence anybody anymore. They couldn't hear his voice anymore because the preacher had no faith. And sometimes as believers, when we have no faith, God will just kill our influence. We want to know why nobody won't listen to us and why we can't preach no more and why they don't use us to sing no more. Sometimes God got to shut you up so you don't mess up his plan for your life. Yeah, because sometimes we say stuff that we don't really want. Sometimes we sow seeds that we don't really want to harvest on. And so instead of God allowing you the opportunity to mess up his plan by speaking the word wrong thing over your life, sometimes he'll just shut your mouth so you can't talk. And so he shut Zachariah's mouth, and he went home. And somehow, even with a shut mouth and no voice, he still got a pregnant wife. Yeah, that'll get y'all on the way home, one. Somehow, even though his mouth wasn't working. Yeah. Yeah, y'all come on. Some of y'all going slow today. Come on. Even though his mouth wasn't working and God took his voice, the rest of his body was working and lined up with the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so uh, we find that Elizabeth is now pregnant, and now at verse 57, it says her full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. I want you to understand in the beginning of the chapter, she was barren. And by the time we get to verse 57, she's so pregnant, she's about to come forth. And I know she is not the only one that we're looking at today that God changed your testimony. He changed your story. There are those of us that we started off uh, one way at the beginning of this chapter of our lives, and God has moved and turned things around in such a way that people don't believe that you're the same person that they were saying was barren. They can't believe that you're the same person, Mother Watkins, that they said was sick, and now you're strutting around here. They can't believe because God will give you a testimony that doesn't look like where you came from. And so I thank God for the mothers who God has given them a testimony. Now, if you didn't want a child, you don't want a child, it's a different type of culture. But at this time, in this culture, the mothers wanted to have children. And Elizabeth, with her old self, is about to bring forth. And it says on the eighth day, on the eighth day, she brought her child to be circumcised. I want to celebrate and thank God for the mothers who sacrifice for their children. I want to say that again. I want to thank God for the mothers who sacrifice for their children. On the eighth day, she has not recovered from labor. On the eighth day, her body is still weak. On the eighth day, she doesn't have her strength. But she gets up and she goes to take the baby to be circumcised. And that is just like motherhood. The mothers that we know, that we celebrate, are the mothers who get up and push through and do what they need to do for the sake of the children. The mothers that we know sacrifice their own strength and their own health to see about the strength and the health of their children. Will you thank God for the good mothers who sacrificed for us? We thank God because Elizabeth got up and she pushed and took the baby. But when she got there, there was a problem because the neighborhood showed up. The community showed up. And they showed up initially. They showed up celebrating. They showed up to thank God for the new baby. They came to see the baby, who the baby looked like, who ears and whose nose does the baby have. And all of that is well and good, but then they overstepped their bounds because when it was time to name the baby, the mother said his name is John, and the neighborhood said, nope, ain't no Johns in your family. We're going to call this baby Zacharias. And I thank God that this mother did not let society name her child. 
that's better than y'all acting. But you know, I got, I got a son that looks like me, and he's 19, and so, uh, so the community wants to put all these statistics on him. They want to say how long he's going to live, and how apt he is to go to jail, and how apt he is to use drugs, and how apt he is, to, and they got all these numbers and statistics that they want to put on him, but I'm saying, like she said, not so. You're not putting that on my child, y'all. Y'all trying to name my child by what you know and what you see, but I'm trying to name my child by what God said. And there are too many of us that have people in our lives that they're trying to speak negativity over our lives. They're trying to tell you that you can only be what you know. You can only be what you came from. And God said, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. And so this mother, this mother, this old mother who is now a new mother is now weak but pushing her way to have her child blessed. And then people, the day shows up and name the child, uh, uh, try to name the child something different than she knows God is saying about her child. And she, by herself, fights against the community. She, by herself, says, I'm not going to let y'all label my child. Zacharias. Wasn't that Zacharias was a bad name? It wasn't that Zacharias uh, was an improper name? It wasn't that Zacharias was an insulting name? But God had a different plan for this child. And sometimes you have to make an intentional effort to choose God's plan over man's plan. Thank God for the mothers who saw God about their children. I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm thankful that my mother is a praying mother. I'm thankful that my mother could hear from God. And, and so when I would come home, God, I'm going to be real transparent, Elder Gray. When I would come home uh, after going to the barber shop, and uh, the brothers in here know it's a whole lot of foolishness gets spoken in the barber shop. And so I would come home with all these crazy ideas that didn't make no sense. And my mother would listen to that stuff and walk away praying. I would hear her, her walking away calling on Jesus. Because I was hearing man's plan. She was speaking God's plan. Thank you, mama, for praying over me. Thank you, mama, for seeking God on how to raise me. Thank you, Mom. And so um, Elizabeth would not let the neighborhood have the last word. She wouldn't let uh, the, the statistics have the last word. She wouldn't let history have the last word. She said, we are going to name this baby John. Now, how Elizabeth knew what God had already spoken to Zacharias when he couldn't talk, I don't know. But she lined up with God's word, and she lined up with God's word in such a way that they had to try to go over her head. So they went over her head and talked to her husband, who couldn't talk. They went over, his, over her head to talk to somebody who could not talk. It's so much there, right there. I, I don't. Ladies, thank y'all for being strong enough that when we try to find somebody to overrule you, you hold your ground and stand in your place and you keep your, your intentions and you keep your determination. When we looking for a man who ain't qualified to do... Y'all do know the man wasn't qualified at the moment. The man was not qualified at the moment because he had no voice. They trying to name the baby. She says the name of the baby. They go seek somebody who can't speak the name of the baby. Mm. Ladies, thank y'all for when we trying to find a man who is less qualified than you and you keep on doing the job. The, yeah. And so they go and they find his father who can't talk to him. They say, what, what should we name this? And he motions for them to bring him a writing tablet. And they bring him a writing tablet and he writes down the same thing that she has spoken. And when he writes down what she has spoken, they both line up with the will of God over the child's life. And then everything changes in the situation. They line up with the will of God over the child's life and then the father gets his voice back. 
Not only does the father get his voice back, everybody is amazed that they are on the same page. And not only is everybody amazed, but if you look at it, he begins to prophesy. He begins to speak over them and speak over the son. And God gets the glory and people marvel because a woman kept her uh, determination about making sure that her household lined up with the will of God. Whether a man was there to speak or not, she knew that God's will was that this boy be named something different. And thank Thank y'all for naming us something different. Thank y'all for seeking God about what we should be called. And I want to say to you that today that as we celebrate mothers, that not only did uh, Elizabeth and Zacharias have the wonderful privilege of naming this child something different that was uh, different than his history, different than his uh, neighborhood, different than the statistics. Not only did they do that, but he became the forerunner for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who did all that he had to do so that he could name us something different. Because, you know, they used to call you a sinner, but now they call you saved. They, they used to call you on your way to hell. Now they say you heaven bound. He, he changed the name because he lined up with the will of God. And I'm so thankful that not only did my mother line up with the will of God, I'm so thankful that not only did Greater Harvest line up with the will of God, but I'm so thankful that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane lined up with the will of God. And he went to that cross so you could call me redeemed. He went to that cross so you could call me more than a conqueror. He went to that cross and so I'm so thankful. I thank God for mama. But God, mama helps me thank God for Jesus. <laughs> so we look at John and how he became one that pointed, pointed people to Jesus. He became the forerunner. He became the one that would go out in the wilderness and in the desert and tell people to get ready, get ready, because there's one coming, and you, you need to know him. You need to make ready for him when he comes. And, and John, because they named him Zacharias, you, uh, they didn't name him Zacharias. Zacharias had the, the temple anointing. Zacharias had the temple calling. John had the street calling. John had the wilderness calling. And I want to tell you today, your name is John, because he told you to go in the highways, in the hedges, and compel him to come. And we all have the John anointing on our lives. We don't just come into the temple and prepare things and worship in here, but we're supposed to go out of here the same way John went out into the wilderness to tell the people to be a witness. We are the Johns of today, and we're supposed to be pointing big people to Jesus. We're supposed to be going out saying, prepare, prepare. And so today I'm thankful for the example of Elizabeth as a mother who teaches us it ain't, it, it ain't over till it's over. It's never too late. God can turn that situation around. Amen. Not only can God turn that situation around, but God can birth something out of you that changes your whole family. And so today, mothers and fathers, I'm thankful for this Mother's Day. I'm thankful for the mother figures in my life. But beyond that, I'm thankful that God has taught us through his word that it's not too late. It ain't over till it's over. And if we give God a yes and we submit to his will, not only uh, will he birth something through us that's special to us, he'll birth something through us that changes the world. Hallelujah. 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 So if you're here today, and you know that God is changing something in your life. What, what used to be normal in your life ain't normal no more. What used to be the statistics that would capture your life don't capture your life anymore. You know that God is doing something different and changing 
something in you and you don't know exactly what's going on and maybe people around you are misunderstanding it and they're calling it one thing and calling it something else but I'm here to tell you lining up with the word and the will of God is the very best thing you can do for your life hallelujah hallelujah so if you're here today and you have not accepted God's will for your life but you want to you have not submitted to what God has spoken over your life, but you want to. You can come down to the altar and we can change that immediately. I thank God for mamas and mothers who gave us our start. But at the end, we're going to see our Heavenly Father. And so I'm thanking God for mama, but I'm also trying to please daddy. So if you're here today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you're here today and you once walked in submission to God's will for your life and then you turned and went your own way, if you meet me at the altar, we'll pray a simple prayer, a prayer of redemption, a prayer of salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We say thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want Everybody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For blessing us with a loved one like a mother. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord. You've been so good and kind. Hallelujah. You made a way. You made a way. You made As the song continues, if you are here and you have had some things to hit your life this week and you're not sure how to handle them, if you meet me at the altar, we'll anoint you and pray God's direction and blessings over you as you navigate. Hallelujah. You made a way. You made a way.
Everybody say it again. Everybody in the house say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Think about what you're thanking him for. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for peace of mind. Thank you for having hope. Delivered power, thank you, Lord. Thank you for keeping us day by day. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Everybody say harm and harm. I have this week I have seen um, illnesses, accidents, uh, strange occurrences. I've seen all kinds of unexpected, just a rash of things happening um, in various places. I am challenging us to focus on God. Don't be distracted. And don't be disturbed. Do what you need to do to get through the situation, trusting God. I believe that there is something happening in the spirit realm. And if we lose focus, it's almost like uh, Elijah and Elisha. E Elijah had a re uh, Elisha had a request of Elijah. And Elisha said, you got to stay focused. Just keep your eyes focused on me when I go up. Keep your eyes focused on me. Because you ask the hard thing. And some of us have asked God a hard thing. And if we lose focus, we'll miss our request. Stay focused. The distractions will not only take your eyes off of what God is doing and who he is to you in your storm. But your, the, the distraction will cause you to focus on the storm as opposed to focusing on the one who speaks peace to the storm. And it's not just for us. You will have to minister that word to others. You will have to minister this same word to others because God will position you in a place where somebody else is being distracted or attacked or disturbed and will need you to speak life in that situation. Uh, you are an ambassador. You are an ambassador. That means where, wherever you go with when ambassadors, it doesn't matter what territory they're in. Once they get there, they represent the nation that, that they are an ambassador for. So we represent the kingdom of heaven. So wherever we go, when we get there, heaven's supposed to show up with us. Amen. And then if you attack me, you attack the, attacking the nation I represent. So I'm challenging you. Stay focused. Keep your mind. Keep your mind on the things of God. And when things arise, seek God. Magnify God in the situation. Glorify God in the situation. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith and don't lose your focus. Because God is sure to see us through. Amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. Will you help me thank God again for mothers today and help me thank God for the word today?
Hallelujah. 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 So I'm so thankful for the opportunity to pastor such a wonderful congregation. And I'm so uh, thankful to be connected to wonderful people like you. Amen. 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 All right. The, uh, we're preparing for uh, tithes to receive the tithes, the offering, and the uh, minister the benediction. I do want to ask you again to remain in your seats until um, the ushers and deacons serve you and give you exit instructions. I also want you all to be intentional this week in joining me in prayer, uh, rebuking suicidal thoughts. Uh, I would those that are intercessors you have that gift to intercede or that call to intercede I definitely want you to spend time in prayer this week um, rebuking uh, suicidal thoughts and praying for those that are experiencing suicidal thoughts but I'm asking everybody to join me in prayer. There, I've had so many conversations over the past month with so many people who are at the brink of suicide or who are considering suicide or uh, their thoughts coming to do them or voices coming to them, uh, speaking to, for them to take their own life. Will you join me this week? Greater Harvest, will you join me? Great Harvest, will you, will you pray with me like someone's life depends on it? Because somebody's life depends on it. Somebody, somebody's life depends on us being able to ask God to, to keep death off of them or keep destruction out of their minds. Somebody's life depends on this. So will you join me, Great Harvest? Okay. And I, I'm uh, really sincerely, we'll probably do a couple of appeal, appeals on, uh, on email or on the website or by phone. But um, I do, I will send out reminders because I definitely need you to pray with us. Uh, Greater Harvest, Mother Eskridge is here today. Looking good in her pink. And has her family here with her. We're thankful. We're thankful. I ain't heard nothing from mother in a while. Y'all, when I eat too much and my soups ain't fitting good, mother let me know. Pastor, you need to lose a little weight. <laughs> she ain't saying nothing lately. I guess I'm doing all right. <laughs> uh, but we're preparing now for uh, to receive the Lord's tithes and uh, offering. And if you have your sacrificial offering, uh, there are some, I think we have one more official week uh, that we're receiving the sacrificial offering. And of course, if you feel led to give beyond that time, uh, you're welcome to do that. But we had a seven week window of receiving uh, the sacrificial offerings. And we are, uh, I think we're right at it next Sunday, I believe may be the last Sunday. But if you have it today, if you would give it to the deacons, if you just put it in the container with the tithes and offering, Elder Moore doesn't have a mic. Lost my sound crew. Okay, I got it. I got it. All right, so we're standing. We're standing. We're standing. We're missing a microphone. We're missing a microphone. All right. So we're thankful uh, that not only is our Lord and Savior big enough to be the, the Lord of our souls, He's big enough to be Lord of everything. And so we're thankful for uh, His Word in our lives. And we're thankful that we trust him in every area of our lives. So uh, today, a Greater Harvest, it is giving time. It's offering time. We bring the Lord's tithes and offerings. And so we're excited about that. I'm excited about it because I know that God keeps his word. When I honor him with my finances, he honors me in my finances. And so I've seen him show up time and time again. So we're going to pray God's blessing now over the uh, giving and our benediction at the same time. The ushers and deacons will serve you at your seat, and then they will give you instructions on how to exit. Will you help me one more time? Thank God for your mother and my mother and all the mothers. Y'all, come on, make it big, make it big. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Father, we thank you now for the, this day you have given us. We thank you now for this time of worship. We pray now your blessings over us as we present now, God, your tithes and your offering. And we honor your word and your instructions. We thank you for the things that you will release in our finances. We thank you now, God, for your word that has gone forth to remind us that you have the last say-so and that you have a plan for our lives. We bless now every mother represented here, God, and every family represented here. We pray comfort now for the, those hearts that are grieving the death and loss of their mother. But God, we thank you for the gift of that mother to that family. And we pray now, God, as we leave this place, you will shield us and protect us. That you will keep us from hurt, harm, and danger as we look to see your will and your way in our lives. We pray for the troubled mind, for the anxious mind. We pray now for the grieving heart. God, we pray now and we speak life. We rebuke the enemy that would deceive and say that we should take our own lives. But God, we speak now life and peace in the mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the people of God said amen and amen. Our church, Our church is a blessed church. A blessed church. Our, church Our church is a blessed church. Is a blessed and church. I, see, I see, oh, let's do it this way. And we see, and we see a greater harvest, a greater harvest in, your in your future. Come on, the deacons and ushers will serve you at your so seat. And it's easy to love you. Come on, come on, come on. So Everybody say the Jesus in me, the Jesus in me, loves the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, loves the Jesus in you, so easy, so easy. Jesus in you. 